In this video, we'll be covering the equilibrium condition and setting up our first ice table and, uh, and again, covering some concepts at the same time. So, and we're not going to be using, uh, typically use concentrations or pressures on ice tables. However, this time we're just going to work with um, numbers of molecules, which also will, should work. All right, so let's start. Um, so here's an example reaction. Um, water, so gaseous water vapors react with carbon monoxide and makes H2 gas and CO2 gas. Um, so these are my reactants and these are my products. And uh, I'm going to show this graphically, like over time, what's going to happen during equilibrium. So um, at, at the beginning, um, this is going to be right here, this line right here. So you could kind of think of this as a as a graph, and my uh, my uh, my x-axis here is going to be time or progress of the reaction, or progress or uh, reaction progress. So over time, you'll see that we'll we start off with zero product, and we start off with some reactant. Um, let's say we have seven molecules of each, and then our product, we start at zero. So we see that over time, this is going to be shifting, our reaction is going to shift over to the right um, because we don't have any product, and we have seven uh, molecules each of H2O and carbon monoxide. Um, so at the end, you'll have like these, these final amounts, and it's based on the energetics of the reaction, the, the final energy state of your... Um, the final energy state of these and the final energy state of these is going to be what determines where this uh, reaction will stop at, at equilibrium. Um, so our equilibrium is established right here at the first point where the concentrations remain the same over time. Okay, so this is this right here is our initial. So this right here is initial. So that's where the I for an ice table comes in, like what you're starting with. So we have seven and zero, seven reactants each and zero products each. And then here we have, um, when you notice that, when you notice that there's no net change, there's no net change. So we don't have slope for either of these. Here we do, and then as we see, it's kind of decreasing and it's approaching equilibrium. So there's no net change. This is when you're at equilibrium. Um, and you could also state this another way. So of product um, or reactant. So there's no net change of product or reactant. And we could also say that the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate. So there might be like two of these going this way and then two of these going this way. So the rate um, is equal. And when this is established, this is called dynamic equilibrium because stuff is still moving forward and stuff is still moving forward and, uh, and backwards. However, there's no net change. This is called dynamic equilibrium when that happens. Um, and this whole segment here, this this whole segment here is the change. So anywhere where there's slope, so this is the start where time is zero, the reaction hasn't started yet, and this is when things are changing, where there is net change. So this is, represents our change line on an ice table. So this is the change. Um, so let's go ahead and try to answer this question here. So it says if we begin, if we begin the reaction with seven molecules of each reactant, how many molecules of H two and CO two will there be, will there be if K is six point two five? So it's asking us what are the. We could actually take that a step further and solve for the equilibrium amounts of these and these um, when this has reached equilibrium. Um, so. Um, let's go ahead and, and set up our ice table on the next slide. So here's our reaction, okay? 
And initially we had seven of these and seven of these, and then these we had zero each. And our K value is 6.25. Um, so we know that this is going to be, this is equal to products. So it's going to be H2 concentration times CO2 concentration divided by H2O times CO concentration. Um, and so if we plug these numbers in, we know that we have zero in the numerator. So we know this reaction over time, it must go this way. We'll see in the future that these, these are not always zero here. You might be starting with some material there. Um, and then we have to calculate um, what's called Q, the reaction quotient, to see which way it's going to change. However, on this reaction, we know it's zero. So we know over time this must go down by a factor of x. And so will this one. And the H2 must go up over time by x. And this must go up by x. If there was a coefficient, you would bring that number down. So for example, if there was a 2 there, um, every time this goes down by x, this will go up by 2x. So this would be plus 2x there. Um, however, this problem, everything is 1 to 1. So this, so all the change line here, these all go up 1 to 1. So I'll make a little note here. If you have, um, if you have coefficients, um, then put them in front of the x. Okay, and likewise, you also uh, will uh, take use it as an exponent in your equilibrium expression. So uh, on these up here. Um, so again, this problem is all one to one, so we don't need to worry about that step here. So now remember that our equilibrium expression is only the amounts at equilibrium. So when we solve, when we plug numbers in to this expression, I'm writing a little subscript for equilibrium, just so you remember that the numbers that we plug in here cannot be the initial amounts. If you plug in the initial amounts, you're calculating something totally different called Q. And we'll get into that a little bit later in this unit. So when you plug numbers in here, it has to be the E line. So let me put like a little red star here to, to show that the numbers that you plug in here are the E line. So the numbers here are what goes into the equilibrium expression. OK, so let's, and to solve for the E line, the E line, this is another helpful thing to remember. The E line is the I line plus the C line so this would be 7 minus x. At equilibrium, the amount of H2O is 7 minus x. At equilibrium, the amount of carbon monoxide is also 7 minus x. The amount of H2 will be x, and the amount of CO2 will be x. So when you, when you bring numbers down and you solve for this, this is what you're using, is that right there. So let's go ahead and uh, try to solve this. So let's set up our equilibrium exp expression. So this is 6.25 equals. And I'm going to plug these numbers into uh, this expression here. Okay, so it's going to be x squared. So x times x over 7 minus x times 7 minus x. And we'll see that when we go to solve for x, there's a real easy way, since this one's set up, it's set up real nice to, you could just take the square root of both sides. So we're trying to isolate and solve for x here. And what you could do is do this. You could uh, take the square root of both sides. Um, but what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. I'm going to show you uh, in your calculator how to do this. Um, so if you uh, if you move this over, and subtract 6.2 from both sides, you'll get this the following function. You'll get 0 um, e equals or uh, x squared 
over 7 minus x squared minus 6.25. Um, and let me show you how we could do this in our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go into y equals, and uh, I'm going to turn on the fraction. It's called math print for your TI calculator. So I'm going to go x squared. So x squared, and then 7 minus x, and square that as well. Um, and then I'm going to go minus 6.25. Um, I'm going to make sure... I don't have anything in here. Yeah, so my stat plot is turned off. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Go back to my y equals. So I'm going to go ahead and gra hit graph. And we see that this graph will it intersects the x-axis in two spots. And so here's how you uh here's how you calculate where it intersects. So you go second function, we're going to go here. And then and in here for calc, so I'm going to go second function calc, and going to go calculate where uh, y is zero. So I'm going to go and select zero, and now my cursor is up up here, and I want it to appear right here and define where I want my graph to calculate um, where y equals zero. So I'm going to define my left and right bounds here and here respectively. So I'm going to scroll until my cursor ends up right there I'm gonna hit enter and then I'm gonna scroll up here I'm gonna hit enter again okay and then my calculator is asking me do you want me to approximate where uh, y equals zero so I, I hit yes since I defined it between here and here okay and it says x equals five so when x equals five then this this statement is true um, it also you also get another value for x. So if I if I keep moving this over, um, so I'm going to do this again. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to figure out where because we should have two possible answers for x. So I'm going to keep scrolling until my cursor appears on this graph, and hit enter, and then uh, I'm going to go below the axis and hit enter here. And it's asking me uh, to if it wants me to approximate, and yes. So my other possible answer is 11.7. Okay, so I'm going to put the calculator away now. So my x equals 5, and the other possible answer is 11.7. And we see that our starting amount here is actually 7. We see that our the starting amount is 7. So x cannot be 11.7. It doesn't make sense chemically. You can't have, like, x can't, you can't have a negative number. You can have, like, negative matter. So chemically, this possible answer doesn't make sense. So our only real solution is um, x equals 5. So we reject this one. Since initially, um, we only had five. Um, notice this is this would be the same exact result if we did this problem this way. The reason I show you the graphing method is it won't always work out like this and you'll need to know how to do that that graphing method. There's another method um, I'll probably go over it with the, with you in class. You use um, a polynomial solver and then you put this in the quadratic formula. I just found that it's um, it's actually quicker I think if you know how to graph it um, and, then, and then you could solve for it that way. I think it's quicker and you make less mistakes mathematically. So when we start doing actual equilibrium problems, you'll have molarities and these really tiny numbers and it gets real messy trying to put that into uh, the quadratic formula and you can make a lot of arithmetic mistakes that way. So if x equals five, um, we're, we still, we wanna solve for these, for these answers up here. So let me, uh, to, um, to highlight what we're doing here, so I'm going to I'm going to put this x back here. So seven minus x would be two if x equals five. So at equilibrium, I'll have two molecules of H2O. I'll have two molecules of carbon monoxide. I will have five H2s and five carbon dioxides, and that is our first equilibrium problem using an ice table. Um, 
I'll, I'll have I I also have the graphing method. I have that written in steps, and I'll um I'll ta attach it to the school's website. Um, so let's uh let's go to a, a practice problem because I kind of uh I went a little quick like by writing this equilibrium expression. So that's kind of like a, and then we'll conclude our tutorial here. So for writing a equilibrium expression, here's the general form. This is the general form. If you have w coefficient a plus x for your coefficient for reactant b, and then it makes a molecule c and z number of d molecules, your equilibrium expression would be this. So you could use Kc or Kp. Kp is with, you're working with pressures. So it, your unit would be ATM or TOR in that case. And Kc is your bracket amounts or molarity, okay, or moles per liter. Um, and that, that's what your equilibrium expression would be. So here's the general form. So you'd have reactants um, to whatever coefficient they, they are uh, divided by your, I'm sorry, pro products over reactants here. And then this one goes there, and this would be to the x power. So try these two examples, and this will conclude our tutorial. So if you have two moles of O3, this does equilibrium with O2, three moles of O2. Okay, try writing your um, equilibrium expression for that, and then try also try this one. So you have two moles of nitrogen monoxide plus Cl2. Okay, and then try writing an equilibrium expression for that one as well, and I'll see what you guys come up with. So that's the end of our tutorial.